Hey, hi everybody, thanks very much Janet. So my name's um, Deborah Goodall, so I'm going to uh, lead the session today and um, we are looking at attracting the right people to your website. So it's not just attracting anybody, you want the right people to come to your website because um, there's no point in attracting people who don't want to buy your goods or services from you. Um, is that not working? Okay, so um, so we'll do intros. Um, like I say, my name's Deborah. I run a uh, strategic marketing consultancy called Air8 Marketing. Um, I'm based in North Yorkshire. Um, so, however, I do spend quite a bit of time. Well, I used to spend quite a bit of time coming across to Cumbria. I'm coming back this weekend. I'm so excited. Um, so, so I'm familiar with the landscape over there. Um, and um, I've been working in marketing for 25 years, oh, just over 25 years. Um, I'm not an SEO specialist. However, um, I come at everything from a um, understanding your customer point of view and understanding what your customer wants. And a lot of that lends itself to being able to be found by search engines. Um, so, you know, I, work, I deliver a lot of these um, training packages and I work one-to-one -one with clients as well. Um, and, you know, these days you can't do any marketing without talking about um, websites, SEL, etc. Um, we'll just have a quick, quick run round so you can introduce yourselves. I am conscious we have only got an hour to do this. So as normal, we'll be galloping through on Tuesday morning. Um, but it's always useful to know um, who's on the call, um, what your business is and um, what you think your challenge is attracting people to your website or why you think you've got a challenge attracting people to your website either one of those um so we'll start with russell please if you're there you got your camera on russell yep yeah, hi there hi. Uh, russell, russell clark i've got melbourne grange cottages near appleby um i suppose the challenges i've got is because i've got one two and three bedroom is whether i attract families or singles or groups or mm. whatever sometimes it's uh, my base is everybody really so just have to narrow that down i think Okay. Um, Debbie? Uh, yeah, Debbie Jackman. I'm a fitness instructor and um, I'm trying to get more people in the senior age group uh, to join on to sessions. Um, that's what I'm looking to do. Okay. Uh, Hannah? Hannah Spooner, are you there? No. Elaine? Yeah, hi. I'm sorry, I can't put my camera on um, okay. today. That's fine. Um, I'm based in Windermere and my business is uh, coaching and cake. So I'm a transformational coach specialised in um, emotional intelligence and I also have uh, advised Jamaican rum cakes as well. Um, I guess my challenge is uh, I've got one website and I've got the, 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 cake, the cake website and I've got the coaching on the cake website. So um, my challenge is uh, attracting well the right people to both. I guess. The right people to both. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Yasmin, Yasmin, are you there? Hi, Deborah. Yeah. Hi. Uh, morning. Um, my business is Grass Major Gingerbread. We're just pivoting to be more e-commerce um, rather than people coming through the front door. Okay. Um, I wasn't there, was she? Uh, oh, I can't see a name tag for the lady with the black shirt on, dark hair. That's you, yes. <laughs> <laughs> can't see a name tag. <laughs> I'm uh, Michelle and my business is Ad Hoc Peer. I'm a virtual assistant. So I have a website, which um, for me, it's just identifying my niche, sort of who my client ideal client is and what type of company they are it's generally micro businesses solopreneurs but um just kind of identifying what type of industry they work in and and how to attract them to my website okay uh colin uh hello um uh, my Hi. name is melbourne i run a, a loud speaker company ej jordan limited and our challenge is that we've got a new product which is aiming at a new market so it's getting that the, the word about that out to the right people out to a slightly different market okay uh brendan hello brendan donnelly and uh, and kieran birch i run a small company called coniston stonecraft uh it, the um 
description is on the tin, really. We're a stone company that make, uh, make we manufacture stone products on the slopes of Coniston Old Man. Uh, I have two websites, but I also have a problem in that um, many moons ago, somebody beat me to Coniston Slate. So uh, we need to attract people without them going to the wrong website. <laughs> okay, not much of a challenge there then. Um, Jan and John. Hi, uh, we run the Hollies Bed and Breakfast and Soul Catering Cottage uh, in Appleby. Oh. And, uh, Do you know Russell? No. <laughs> no. no. Oh, come on, you're in the same village. We have um, been to meetings before. Well. <laughs> we have been to no. meetings before. But, have uh, you? Right, okay, that's good, as long as you recognise each other. Um, uh, and Anita. Okay, hello, good morning everyone. I'm Neta Gipka. Uh, I'm a director of uh, RAF General Engineering based in Workington. And uh, I think, uh, yeah, I would like to find out more how to uh, attract uh, the right people because it looks like I try, I don't know what I'm doing because it's not the people I want to get, I want them to get in touch with me, to try to contact to me, not to know what, so yeah, it will be nice session. Okay. Has everybody introduced themselves? Yes. Good. See some nods. Nobody's waving. No. Right. Brilliant. Okay. So, like I say, today we're going to look at driving more relevant visitors uh, to your website. Um, think about keywords and phrases. Touch on web optimization. I am not a techie person. Um, please do not ask technical questions. <laughs> um, and then we'll look a little bit at measurement at the end. Um, and like this is going to be quite pacey, but do um, interrupt if you've got questions. Um, and at some point, I might ask you guys to get involved a bit as well um, to try and keep it uh, interactive. Um, so, um, so just, to, uh, we, I mean, we had this slide uh, last week for those of you that were um, on that webinar. But really, it's about your website being at the heart of any of the activity that you do. So, um, any marketing or promotional activity that you undertake for your business uh, will ultimately drive people to your website. And obviously, SEO is part of that. Um, but there's lots of other things that you can do to drive the right people to your website, you know, whether that's through um, your social media or your email marketing to your lists, or it might be that you're looking at um, offline marketing, you know, traditional adverts or PR or leaflets or um, direct mail, whatever, whatever you might undertake. We'll touch a bit on content, content marketing. I will mention a little bit about PPC um, further on in the presentation, um, the most part of it will be about basic SEO. Okay, right, so this is the bit that is, to me, fundamentally important when it comes to any aspect of marketing, is to really know who your customers are. So who are your customers or potential customers? Um, and it's important not just for SEO purposes, but for all of your marketing and for your business to try and think about um, those people as real people and try and develop a picture of who they are. Um, for the purposes of this webinar, um, I want you to think about how these people currently find your website. And do you know that? Do you know how they find your current website or are you assuming um, do you have assumption based, oh, they find our website through um, uh, Visit Cumbria or they find our website through our trade organisation or they find our website, um, or they find it through Google, but then actually you don't know, even know whether you're ranking on Google. So do you know how they're finding you and actually how do you know that? Is it foundation in um, fact or is it assumption? Um, how do they describe what you do? 
not what you think you do but how do they describe what you do and what words and phrases so what language are they using how are they constructing their sentences how are they how are they looking for loudspeakers um, you know what words and phrases are they actually using um, and how are they likely to search for your business so are they using google so 90 percent of searches are done, done on google but it might be that they're using bing or it might be that they're using Firefox or Safari um, or one of the other um, search engines that are out there. So over to you, does anybody know or think they know um, how their customers find their website now and whether that's based in fact? Anyone? Anyone? <laughs> No, but it's made me think I should ask. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, that's... I use analytics to <laughs> monitor that. So through refer some percentage of them come through referrals. Most of them come through direct, through email campaigns. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Brilliant. Analytics highlights that, but like I've got a problem where 80% of it comes direct. Right. And that doesn't sound like a problem, but I want to kind of narrow that down. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So... Um... Uh, have you got Search Console as well, Yasmin? Google Search Console. Yeah. Yeah, and Tag Manager. Yeah, yeah. So if you if you use Search Console um, alongside your Google Analytics, you can see the search phrases that they're using. Ah, um, magic. Um, rather than just you know they're coming direct. So it might be that they they originally come um, using oh. a, 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 a phrase or keyword. Um, and then it might be that they they go back and you might send them I don't know they might see something somewhere else if you go into your analytics you can look in uh, acquisition and mm -hmm. yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. multi multi-channel funnels so you can see how many touch points you're having before people come to your website anyway that's a bit of a distraction um, so um, so in terms of trying to you need to work out what what words and phrases people use to come to your website not how you think you describe yourself or your service but actually what they are going to be looking for which is the difficult bit but it's really really important um, and then also how are they likely to search for your business and also actually are they searching are they searching on a mobile for your business or are they searching on a tablet or a desktop because that's going to affect um, you know where you drop them into on your website how fast your website loads all of that kind of thing yeah um the other thing to kind of think about is whether they are actually going through a process to find your business um and this is called search intent because we can't do anything in marketing without it having some funky name um and so I've, I've, I've done the example of a mattress. So it might be that you want to buy a mattress. And so you would search for a mattress and you see all of these adverts and then you get places where you can buy them. Um, and you know, all this stuff starts coming up and then, and then you do a bit more um, research and you start thinking about, okay, actually I want a natural mattress. Um, and so you start and whittle down what you're doing. Um, and then you get all these things from the wool room and snoozle green and all this sort of stuff, the mattress guide. And then you start reading things that have come up. So it's kind of like a research process that you're going through to actually um, make a decision rather than actually, I just want a mattress. I don't just want a mattress, actually. I've started reading stuff. I don't want memory foam. I don't want all those chemicals. I want a natural mattress. And then, and then you're into, oh, well, actually, I want a wool mattress um, in the UK. So, so it's about... Um, whether people are uh, wanting, know exactly what they want at point of search, which I don't necessarily think that people do, or whether they're going through some sort of research process initially that they will then come to your website. Um, so if you think about it in terms of, it might be an informational search. So, you know, um, someone wants to know stuff, you know, so how, what, why, which type questions. Um, it might be navigational, so if you've got a venue or um, accommodation, it might be, or it might be that they want to know where to go for an answer. So it might be, um, if you're doing your mattress search, you might be looking for um, uh, recommendations for wool mattresses or something or other. 
um, which would probably send you to the witch guide or something. Um, it might be transactional, you know, people might be searching for a cheap mattress or, um, or the best mattress or something like that. Um, and then it's, then it's into sort of commercial. So you're looking for actually if those people are ready to buy. Does that make sense that people don't necessarily go, right, I'm, I'm, this is what I'm looking for. And I can see this working particularly well with um, accommodation, um, Colin with your loudspeakers, you know, people are not just going to put loudspeakers into Google. They're going to be specific about what they want or they're going to do some research. It's going to have to fit with the rest of the kit they've got, you know, um, for coaching sessions, people might look for a coach and then they'll do a bit of research and try and find out whether that coach um, meets their needs or, or offers what they want or whether it's the right kind of coach. So are they looking for a life coach? Are they wanting a transformational coach? Are they wanting a body coach? So it's about actually what that intent is. Does, do, does that make sense to people? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, we're getting some nods. Good, good. Yeah. yeah. So can anybody think about how their customers or maybe talk us through how they think their customers might search to get to them rather than the obvious sort of what they, what they might have thought their search would be i think we get a lot of customers coming to us via um tweet and uh facebook right and they click click through yeah and find us that way or they've been in coniston and they've taken a note um but i think that we lose out on just the the um search intent because we're quite aware down the um down the list yeah so, so, so yeah so so by understanding what their search intent is that's yeah. how you start and focus on on what the keywords yeah. are and phrases yeah. that you um we're not prepared to give google any money so we're, <laughs> we're unlikely to be able to move that but well, I think people, yeah <laughs> via via a different different Group. way which yeah. is okay at yeah. the moment we're fine with that um you know ultimately we'll probably change it a little bit but at the moment we're fine with it yeah yeah okay so um you probably can move yourself up google by thinking more in these terms of actually what is the what is the search intent when they come to you so instead of thinking um that you want to rank for coniston uh coniston stonecraft well you probably do rank rank for coniston stonecraft but coniston slates is where you were saying that you didn't have yeah we don't rank at all on coniston slates so if somebody puts the two keywords <laughs> slate is slate is what we do coniston's where we are they get somebody else right if they put stonecraft but people don't people go well what's what's it made of it's yeah, yeah. Stonecraft. Yes. stonecraft's our yeah. title yeah. But as I say, we can't get that because we don't own that uh, that web link. Yeah. So there's probably things we can do. We'll come on to this shortly, but there's probably things we can do on your website to improve your ranking for things like Coniston Slates. Um, yeah. But is there a longer uh, phrase that people would be looking for that would direct them to you? So what is it that you make out of Coniston Slates? Uh, well, you know, people are looking for cheese boards made out of slate. We're, again, we're well down the list um, because people pay Google and, you know, you'll have John Lewis and Lakeland Slate, Lakeland Stone and uh, not Lakeland Stone, Lakeland, the yeah, Lakeland kitchen Plastic company Plastic, whatever, yeah. and people like that who, who all want to sell their slate boards, their yeah. cheese boards in front of us. But yeah. um, if you if you search, if you were really keen and searched locally made uh lake district slate cheese boards we'd probably yep. be in the top three yeah okay so that's that's a perfect example of understanding search intent so if you look at these this example here we've got mattress we've got all these adverts for simba and loaf emma and otty or whatever and then shops to go to so that will be the equivalent of people searching for a cheese board and then you can then you, you whittle down your search as a result of actually the the type of customer that you are or the type of customer that you will be appealing to as opposed to the person that will go into John Lewis to buy yeah. um, a slate cheese board. So it's, it's likely that they would be searching on a longer phrase um, that would be something such as um, Lake District cheese board. Um, 
I'm trying to think what else I might put, you know, locally sourced cheese board, UK manufactured cheese board. Um, yeah. You know, so, so don't try and think about competing with the likes of um, John Lewis and uh, Lakeland. Think about really owning your niche because if yeah. you can get, uh, even though there might be fewer searches for the niche, but if, if say you've got 90% of that really niche search traffic going to your website, that's better than trying to compete with John Lewis and getting 0.01% of the traffic going to your website. Yeah. Does that make sense? Yeah, 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 it makes sense, yeah. Can I suggest unique individual artisan? Yeah. Yeah, they're all good words. They're all things that people might use. Yeah, artisan, you know, people are looking for specific stuff, unique gifts, unique slate gifts, whatever. You, but again, it comes back down to understanding the motivation of your customers. Um, that's what's going to drive them to your business. Yeah? Yep. Okay. Right. Right, so um, on page SEO is um, the things that you can do uh, within your website on specific pages to make uh, make the experience well to improve your ranking but basically if you think about a search engine as being a service um, and so Google wants to provide a really good service to its users yeah um, so if somebody puts something into Google and Google sends them somewhere where they don't actually find what they think they were looking for then that reflects badly on Google so so Google will then think actually we don't want to send people to that website so all the time Google is think of Google as a service provider who's trying to provide a brilliant experience for their users rather than it being some like huge database think of it as a service provider and it's all about the experience that they're delivering and if if you deliver the experience uh, that that customer who's using google when i say google i mean generically it's like saying hoover isn't it? um then uh then you are likely to go up or maintain good rankings yeah so in terms of um what you can do on your website that you can control yourself um think about um unique and relevant content i know marketers talk about this all the time but it's about having um content that positions you as an expert and an authority and sort of gains trust um think think really hard about why people are accessing your website and what you're delivering so that search intent is really important because like I say, you don't want to be competing with the likes of John Lewis. You know, I'm assuming none of you have got a John Lewis sized budget. Um, not a very good assumption to make. You might, somebody might have. Um, but why really, why are people accessing your website and, and what are you delivering for them? Um, think about the, um, the layout of the copy, um, which we did touch on a little bit last week in terms of headers and page structure. Um, use those subheaders to break copy up, make it a nice experience to read copy. Um, think about um, actually what your metadata says. So the description underneath your listing on the Google results. So I'll just flip back, um, which is this bit here. So um, current thinking is that it doesn't contribute to your, to your SEO. However, it does contribute to the overall experience that the person is having when they use that search engine um, so if your description here tells them what they're going to find on that page then that will um, encourage more people to come assuming they've got the right search intent more people to come to your website and to stay on your website because you're telling them what they're going to find when they get there um, image optimization so a lot of people fall foul of this so so there's um make sure that your images are, are the right size for a start off so you can compress them your techie guy or your uh, website person can make them the right actual size don't have them as like whopping massive images that are slow to load don't show on a mobile all that sort of thing but also use um 
label them as actually what they represent. So instead of being um, 0056.jpg, it might be that you call them exactly what they are. So it might be that they're a, um, a JVC 500.36 loudspeaker. I don't know, I'm just making stuff up now. Um, but actually label specifically what they are, because if people are searching for something specific, then that tag can help to contribute rather than it just being 0056 JPEG or however it comes from your smartphone to your website. Um, think about um, usability. So can people read it properly? How quickly it loads? Um, ease of use. So think about presenting copy in that um, F shape rather than in a Z. So on a piece of paper, people tend to lay things out in a Z shape. So you've got hotspots uh, in the top uh, left-hand corner and the bottom right-hand corner. Um, on a screen, people read in the shape of an F. So you want to be kind of using, using that sort of layout to present words um, and copy and use the sort of space on the right-hand side that's kind of dead space for imagery. Um, Accuracy, so again, do, do you deliver what you promise in your metadata? And th really think about that expertise or authority and, tr and trust, but don't keyword stuff. So by that, you know, I mean, get your, get your keywords in there, which we'll sort of talk about keywords and phrases in a minute, but don't go mad with them. Um, think about um, adding new content to your website because effectively that starts to invite the crawlers to come back to your website to get indexed. Um, but just make your content compelling and useful and relevant. So make it something that people will want to read or something that people might be searching on. Okay. Right. So keywords and phrases. Um, so, Understanding what keywords and phrases drive people to your website is the foundation of um, your SEO strategy. It's a really important part. Don't make assumptions, do do research. Because if you start making assumptions, then, you, then basically you, you are flawed from the start on your SEO. So if you think that people are looking for, um, I don't know, um, a medical clinic, and actually they're looking for a local doctors, then you're never going to rank because you're not using the right words. Yeah. Um, so in terms of how to do your research, if you have Google search console attached to your Google analytics on the back of your website, you can actually see the words and phrases that people are using to currently come to your website. So that's a good start point. Um, however, you can also use the keyword planner, which is in the Google AdWords um, package. So even, you don't need to use AdWords. You don't need to pay to use any of this. It's all free. If you put keyword planner into Google, it will take you into here and you can add in, you would add in up here what you think your um, keyword is. Um, and it would tell you keyword ideas down here, um, average monthly searches, so bed and breakfast, Skegness, um, 1,000 to 10,000 searches. Um, and you have to sort of think, right, okay, so I've got bed and breakfast in Skegness. Am I going to compete with 1,000 to 10,000 searches taking? There's a lot of searches taking place. There's a lot of traffic. Um, and, it, you know, it says competition is quite low. So actually, I'm, I, might, I might try and go with that. But what I might do is go with something a bit more niche, like B and B Skegness Seafront, because I'm right on the seafront. So I'm starting to get specific about what I'm offering because I want people who specifically want what I can give them. Yeah, mm -hmm. rather than being super generic. Um, think about. Um, sort of new on the horizon people are starting to search using um, voice devices you know like Alexa um, so they're not necessarily just typing in b and b Skegness it might be Alexa find me a b and b on the seafront at Skegness 
So think about those long tail keywords. Long tail keywords are basically phrases. I don't know why they call them long tail keywords. Um, uh, so it, the way people search is going to impact the, the, the whether they're using you know specific keywords or general phrases. Yeah. Um, Google is quite clever, so it will. Um, it will offer up uh, alternatives if you make spelling errors. It will also it, it's also intelligent enough to come up with um, synonyms, synonyms, so where words, um, alternative words that uh, mean the same thing. Um, but it might be that you think around things in terms of conceptually related sort of words that could describe what you're doing to broaden out, actually, to try and capture the right people to come to your website. Um, if you're going, if you, if you're, if you're going to go with something like, well, you wouldn't because you're in the Lake District, but B&B Skegness with parking, brilliant. So, but make sure that that drops them into a page that, that reassures them that your web, your, your B&B has car parking. So all the time it's about making that journey for the user as brilliant as possible. So if they've searched on something, then drop them into the right page on your website. So you don't have to send all traffic to your home page. You can send people to other pages on your website. Okay. Um, other places to look for content ideas, Google Trends. Um, Google Trends is brilliant. Um, don't ever, when you're in the middle of a pandemic, just look at the past 12 months because it'll be skewed massively. Um, it goes back, you can do um, five year search and I think you can do from the, I think you can do right back to the start of 2004, to be honest, might be a bit long. Um, so this is useful for um, writing content or blog pieces for your website. Um, and if you can identify a seasonal trend so if you looked across the last five years and people were always looking for coaching services in January, then it might be that in about the first week in December, um, you write a blog piece about how to find um, the right coach for you. That gives uh, Google time to kind of find your content, index it. And then when people are making that search, in January, which you know they're going to do because there's a trend for it, then your stuff should start and rank for that. Um, so it's you, Google Trends again, free to use. Go to Google, put Google Trends in Google, come up with you know what you want to explore. So what you think your search term might be. Um, again, lower down on this on this page, it gives you alternative search terms that people might use, uh, and it is just interesting to look at actually what trends are taking place in your industry so um, so with this one with self-catering accommodation you know super generic i've not put any regions in there um we would have been coming out of lockdown one around here somewhere so people were looking for self-catering accommodation um you know it all died off no 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 oh we're going to be coming out of lockdown again um Everybody's again back looking for self catering accommodation. Uh, this isn't absolute searches. This is relative, by the way. So this is just you know, that's the maximum there's ever been in this time frame. But it gives you an indication. But don't don't just look at the past twelve months because everything's so skewed. So if you're going to start looking into Google Trends, look over the past five years and sort of have half a mind that actually twenty twenty to 2021 is going to be a bit weird. Um, another place you can go to for um, uh, content ideas is um, answerthepublic.com. Um, again, another free one that you can use um, and you can just basically put in whatever your industry is. So on this one, um, I put in gravel cycling, um, gravel biking, sorry. And there's, you know, it tells you what people are searching for. So what is gravel biking? What to wear when you gravel biking? What is gravel cycling? How to get into gravel biking? Um, is it fun? Is it dangerous? Um, da, 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 how to ride a gravel bike? How to set up a gravel bike? So these are all brilliant ideas that you can then make into content pieces on your website 
or you can put into the content things that answer these questions. So people are actually searching for this stuff. So, so it might be that um, folk want to know um, what to wear when hill walking. It might be that you've got an um, uh, accommodation that's uh, brilliantly located for hill walking. So as part of your development for um, expertise, authority and trust, you'd be talking about your accommodation, but you'd also be talking about what they can do from the doorstep. Um, so if you put hill walking into answerthepublic.com, you could find all the questions relating to that. Yeah. It's, I think you can download this into a CSV, but I quite like the way it all comes out. Um, and it goes on for ages with loads of alternative questions and bits and pieces as well. So it's, it's more than just that snapshot, but it's worth having a look at. I don't know why that's stuck there. Um, the technical aspects of SEO um, are the bits um, that are harder to... Uh, harder to self-manage, I guess, is the best way to describe it. Um, but it's basically about the performance and visibility and accessibility of your site. Um, so your website will be analysed by the search engine um, so that so that it's um, they can see that it all links together in a structured, in a properly structured fashion. So you've not got broken links. You've not got links to other play pages that say click here. It actually, the link to the other page is, is linked by what is on that page. So it's all correctly mapped together. Because what you don't want to be doing is ranking for click here, which apparently in the 90s Adobe did really well. If you search click here on Google, because all their, all their um, website links were click here instead of their hyperlink being you know um uh click for um adobe reader and then optimized for adobe reader so so your hyperlinks within your website should actually tell people where they're going um you can upload a sitemap to google search console that's not actually a physical upload you set up google search console properly and then you tell it where to look for your sitemap which will be part of the hierarchy of your website um, the other thing that is super important a lot of people fall foul of is website speed um, and apparently the optimum on this is less than two seconds on a 3g mobile and then you can start and think about your own website and you think, my God, mine had never load that fast on 3G. Obviously only, obviously, you know, it's contributory to your um, search engine results um, and will influence where you rank, uh, but it's only super important if a lot of people are looking for you on a mobile. You know, people are a little bit tolerant of slightly slower loading websites but anything over about four or five seconds and you've had it really um, make sure that you don't have any broken pages or redirects um, think about um, the structure of your pages um, and think about um, being an, a, a sort of expert expert in what you do but also if people are going to search for you locally or regionally, be an expert in your locality or region. So if you're based in Ambleside, then it might be that you um, uh, have, have a page on there about places to eat in Ambleside or things to do in Ambleside or other businesses in Ambleside or, or things that are related to what you offer, um, but that will get that mention in of your locality as well. Um, in terms of sort of the accessibility, um, you can download something. Again, it's free. Um, if you use Google Chrome, it's called Lighthouse. It's a Chrome app um, and you can run it on any website that you are on. Um, and it will, it will tell you all sorts of stuff like whether your website is fast enough to load, um, what the accessibility of it is, what your SEO ranking is. Um, so also worth getting that and having a little look at it. That's, that's quite a quick canter through technical. Is, is everyone sort of okay with that? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, off, off page SEO. So this is anything that you do um, 
through your other marketing channels, your other digital marketing channels that drives traffic to your website. Um, so it's um, content about your business, but on, um, on another website. Uh, it's content um, that's coming from your social channels, um, from it might be that you have um, uh, Visit Britain uh, accreditation. So are you listed on Visit Britain? Are they coming towards you? Have you got the Visit Britain accreditation on your website? So it's all about anything else that you are doing digitally that people will view as being um, offering trust and value to your business. So all of those links to associations and memberships, guest blogs, um good links you know good quality links don't don't go mad with backlinks that have no value so you are looking for things that um and encourage people to trust what you are doing so it's no good just getting listed on a load of directory sites that have no relevance at all to your business um because what you're trying to do is say you can trust me i am a real business and this is this validates that I know what I'm doing in my industry. Yeah. Um, think about reviews as well. So um, Google My Business, the Google My Business um, listing. If you have not got a Google My Business listing, you need to set one of those up. Um, if you work from home, as I do, you don't have to put in your address. So for mine, I just cover the north of England. So the, on the map, it just shows the north of England instead. So, so if you don't want folk turning up at your home, um, you can hide that. I know that was an issue sort of a few years ago. People were like, oh, I don't, I don't want people there. Um, you can, you can um, make that invisible. Um, the reviews on Google My Business are the most important reviews in terms of affecting your Google SEO. Um, however, the other thing is obviously reputation, which is reviews that are on other um, websites as well. Um, however, it's the Google My Business ones that have more um, more clout than reviews on sort of other third party sites. Um, interestingly, they don't all have to be five star reviews. Um, in fact, Google um, uh, think that from a trustworthy point of view, a mix of reviews is better than just all five star reviews which you know actually is quite good because it means if you get that one one star review it's not going to impact negatively um on your seo if they were all one star reviews it would do um so think about driving people to review your business uh to google my business to your google my business listing um write about things that make you an expert you know, are you getting featured in um, digital magazines? Um, are you getting profiles? Uh, are, you, are you having positive mentions? Are other people mention, mentioning you in a positive light? Um, all your social signals, so the stuff that you're doing on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, LinkedIn, TripAdvisor, whatever, all feed in to contributing to being able to be found on Google. Um, and this one is also quite important. <clears throat> so are your, are your contact details consistent across the internet? So Google likes things to be um, absolutely right and consistent all the way through. So if you've got your address as um, um, the Hollies, um, Mill Lane, Appleby and Westmoreland, fine. But then if you've got it as the Hollies, um Appleby then that's different so it can't match up that that is actually the same place so wherever you've got your address so on your social media um on other websites where you're listed on your own website make sure that they're all consistent all the way through doesn't like inconsistencies okay right Really quick, AdWords is the paid for bit of search results. Um, think about um, your target audience. Will they be using Google 
um, or are they also using Bing? A lot of people forget about Bing. Um, if, you've, if you're chasing down an older demographic, probability is that they use Bing, although the most searched for term on Bing is Google, um, because um, a lot of uh, PCs and stuff come with Bing loaded as the default search engine and they don't know how to un, un default search um, that to Google. So it might be that with your AdWords, you might look towards using Bing instead of Google, but again, it comes down to understanding who your target audience is um, and which search engine they're going to be using. You can manage your own campaign <coughs> uh, with AdWords, or you can pay a professional. Um, now, personally, I would always pay somebody else to do it. I think it's horrendously complicated and there's lots of things with negative keywords that need to be taken into account as well. Um, however, lots of businesses successfully manage their own campaigns. Don't let me put you off. Um, the, uh, the same things with AdWords, um, sorry, the same with AdWords, the same things that affect your SEO results will impact on your AdWords campaign. So things like if your advert sends them to a page that doesn't deliver the right experience or they don't get sent to the right service or product um, or your page is slow to load um, or the overall experience of your website isn't good, then uh, you will either be served less on an AdWord campaign or you will pay more. So get your website right first before you start going down the AdWord route. Um, otherwise, you're going to spend a lot of money because, again, it comes back down to Google being a service provider and then wanting to deliver best service for their customers, i.e. the person that's searching. And if your website can't deliver that sort of good level of experience, then you will pay for it. And if you're in AdWords, you will actually physically, you know, financially pay for it. Um, so, you know, there's lots to bear in mind when you when you're setting up an AdWord campaign. Um, and part of it is about actually the experience that the um, that the user is going to get and whether it lines up with what you're promising in your AdWords. OK, right, I feel like I've talked really fast now. Um, <laughs> so so in terms of measurements, so you're going to put this effort into your um, into your SEO or into your AdWords. So what you need to know is actually, am I getting the right people to my website? Um, are they staying on my website? Um, you know, are they looking round? Because they're all contributory factors to sort of Google thinking you've got a good website. Um, so Google Analytics, which I'm hoping all of you have got in your website somewhere. Um, brilliant. Again, another free tool, really easy to set up. You've got Google Analytics in Google. Um, asks you for your web address, gives you a bit of code, stick it in the back end of the website and you start tracking from that point forward. Um, but you can see how many people are coming to your website, how many users, um, how many times uh, they come back, what your bounce rate is. Your bounce rate's important, you don't want a high bounce rate, so bouncing is if people come to one page and then leave. So that from Google's point of view is a negative experience um, because it, it sort of suggests that they they aren't getting what they think they were being promised when they come to your website, yeah? Um, there's loads of stuff in Google Analytics. Um, I mean, you can see down here, you know, there's like more, so you, can, you can go into, you know, whether they're male or female, what age category they fall into, what their interests are, where they're um, based in the world, and then you can drill down to um, sort of at the city level, uh, what their behavior is on your website, what technology they're using, what type of mobile, what browser, um, user flow, so how they're actually going around your website. Um, but you can see in acquisition where your customers are coming from. So what is driving traffic to your website? So with this website, Google, um, then direct, and then all of these are um, referrals through uh, third party sites where there's been um, articles published or you know really anything um, based so um, 
I did just mention to uh, Yasmin about um, uh, multi-channel funnels, which is um, it's further into um, Google Analytics. I've not got a slide of it in this, but if you delve into it a lot further, you can start and see how many touch points you've had before people make a transaction with you if you've got a transactional website or um, how many touch points people have with your website and also whether they're coming then from um, direct Google, an e-newsletter, a third party referral site, that kind of thing. So don't always just assume that um, because some activity you have done is not listed in your where your customers are coming from that it's not working because it might be that they've had several touch points to get to you um, that have built up a picture before they become a transacting customer. But as, as a sort of, you know, starter point, where your customers come from, it's in acquisition and then source medium, gives you a really good picture of what is driving traffic to your website, um, you know, and, and also whether they're staying on. So, you know, people are coming onto this website from Facebook, but they're bouncing straight off but they come from um, redbull.com or moddirt.com and the bounce, I mean, the bounce rate there is really low, you know, sportif.com really low again. So people are looking around the site. Okay, right. Whew. God, that was quick, wasn't it? Um, <laughs> there's so much stuff in this. Has anybody got any questions? Um, on my website, I have um, inserted a, a website that I use for bookings will it's on that part be picked up or should I make sure I'm duplicating the words at the site? Yeah, um, so uh, I think I, I think I got that but your signal broke up a bit um, oh are you still can you still hear me no you froze and she's can everybody else hear me yeah no problem yeah Hi. It oh, yeah, it's. Can you hear me now? <laughs> yeah, you keep you keep drifting in and out, Debbie. Can you give your email address to? I'll get your email address from. Um... I can't even remember your name. Janet. Janet. Thank you. <laughs> I'll, I'll email you. I'll email you. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, she's gone again. Has anyone else got a question? No. no. Do you feel like you are um, a little bit more informed about search engine optimization now? Yeah. I have a question, please. Oh, hi. Yeah. It's, it's Elaine here. Yeah. Um, I just wanted to know what I could do with that. I've got quite a few articles in, in the press. So how could I use that on uh, my website um, to you know, get better results with SEO, uh, um, especially with my blog? What, what do you think the best option would be there? Okay. So you can link from your website to the articles in the press i think that's right there are there are some complicated regulations through the newspaper licensing authority which i don't ever pretend to understand um, about putting things on your website that have appeared in print um, and it's worth checking those out because i'm I'm not confident on what they are, to be honest. Um, I think you can do a link. It might be that you say in your, in your blog that you've recently been featured in something, but don't ever do that thing where they um, take a photo of the, of the article and then put it in because that's, that's where they start and charge you for um, uh, copyright. something, oh, copyright and all this sort of stuff. It, it turns into a right nightmare. Um, and, and the newspaper licensing authority are, are particularly vicious. So um, I would be cautious, uh, but I, I would suggest that you can say that you have been featured in um, or you're pleased to be featured in and you talked about this in the article or the article um, discussed this aspect of whatever it was you did, but don't put specific bits in um, and definitely don't have pictures of it. But okay, but I could put a link to the article. For I example. think you can get away with a link, but check it on the newspaper licensing authority because I don't want to give you the wrong advice on that. Okay, all right. Thank, Thank you very much. much. Yeah. Cheers.
Just while we're waiting for any other questions, because I just launched the poll. This is the poll that we do from D uh, Digital Tech Cumbria's point of view, just to see whether we're hitting the target market correctly and getting our um, webinars of the right topics. So I'll launch the poll while you're also thinking of other questions, but please bring them forward. <laughs> uh, I've got a question. Um, if you've got existing testimonials, for example, yep. we've got a um, couple of pages of testimonials on the website, What's the best way of, of making use of those? Um, so I always think that testimonials should be used within the copy rather than a separate page. So it's almost like you say something and then it's validated by your customer testimonial. Rather than having um, everything you say on one page and then um, all of the testimonials on another page. Because people would rarely visit a testimonial page. But if you're saying something and then you can validate it, with a third party testimonial, put it underneath and make it obvious it's a testimonial. Oh, excellent. Okay, so put them in a blog or something like that. Or whatever. Yeah, or, or you know, if you're selling um, products and um, you're talking about a specific product and then someone's done a testimonial about the product and how fabulous the service was from yourself when they discussed their purchase, then put it underneath that as well. So it's all about reinforcing um, trust and authority and expertise all the way through the experience. Okay, right, thank you. I ask about some um, conflicts perhaps with keywords where we have both bed and breakfast and self catering. Mm. Um, if I just put keywords in that covers both aspects, will that confuse folks rather than help them? Um, no, because it, so long as you're dropping them into the right bit of the website. You know, so if you're talking about the B&B, you drop them into the B&B bit of the website. If you're talking about the self-catering accommodation, try and drop them into the self-catering accommodation website so that the overall experience is good, you know, because what you don't want people to do is, is get to somewhere and then go, oh, actually, oh, it's a and b and I want self-catering, leave. You want them to go somewhere and be like, oh, I've, I've got the right thing for me. And then they might look around and go, oh, actually, they've got b and Might fancy that for a bit of a change. You know, don't so make their. It's all about their journey. Okay. Any more questions for any more guys? <laughs> Please ask no, away. No, that's good. Well, we're actually spot on time, and thank you very much for completing the poll. That was brilliant. Um, we're here again next week. Um, Please join us again, same time, same place. Um, and if you are not part of the programme, and I think most of you are, please um, make direct contact with me via the website um, and we'll be happy to support you. But actually, glancing around, I think most of you are. Um, I think next week's Facebook for Business, isn't it? Facebook for Business, thank you. I could have Googled it on my, um, I can't <laughs> my diary, but I can't multitask and talk into a screen at the same time, so <laughs> not going <there. laughs> Um, so look forward to seeing you next week. You'll all get reminders in any case, but please just have a look on our website for any of the details that you want. But great to meet you all this morning. Go across and, yeah. go out and enjoy the sunshine now while it lasts in Cumbria. We've got it. That's the main thing. Thank you. Thanks, Thanks very much, everyone. Thank you. Bye. 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 Thanks very much. Bye-bye.